See drunks as well, ex-Battlefield 4 pro player for Fnatic. He was a bit of a monster in his time, so he could have some fun here. But we'll see how much he's been able to put into this, because we are into it. And look how gorgeous this looks already. You can see this huge environment, and this map is not small. This is only just a part of it, and you know, that looked fairly big already. So here we go, with tanks rolling into the battle. And in the background there, you can already see some of the capture points. At the top of the screen, you can see there are seven on this map. So actually, in case people are new to Battlefield as a whole, maybe they haven't played the previous iterations and they're just watching to see what's going on here, we'll jump into the content soon enough. Explain to us how this game mode works so people know what to be looking for here, Westy. Okay, so Conquest is your bread and butter for Battlefield. It's like the original game mode. And, you know, you're fighting for control of the whole map. You've got various things that you need to be looking for, different capture points all over the map. And here already, as you can see, we are on board with Level Cap. And uh, something that uh, I think he's been doing quite a lot recently is playing with the Flame Trooper. Now, unfortunately, it's switched away, but hopefully we can go back to that in a minute. Yeah, we can definitely check that out. The horses are out now. We're going to have three games of this, so don't worry. We'll get to break down this content for you. Yep, and maybe like Johnny Cash has inspired the Ring of Fire. You know what I mean? Yeah. It all comes out now. We're going to see it going on. But yeah, this is the horse gameplay that we were looking for. Again, though, you're not going to get away with it. You can't just charge at two people and hope for the best. You will be taken down. It looked like the horse may have survived that, but the rider certainly didn't. Well, yeah, that's uh, an interesting point, actually. It's uh, The horse is very similar to other sort of open vehicles where you can die, but your vehicle, or horse in this case, may survive because the horse has a higher health level than you do. So let's take ourselves through this map as well. What have we seen so far? It looks as though we've got kind of an... It, ooh, oh, nice day. What we're looking at so far is some sick sniping. <laughs> All right. But coming back to the point, it looks like we've got a nice little area for what may be more infantry-based battling. And yep. then you've got this huge landscape as well. It, there's quite a lot going on here. If you imagine sort of like a, an oval shape to this map, at the top of the oval you've got an infantry section. It's, it's almost like a little village, and we're in it now looking at some close quarters gameplay. And this really is sort of uh, your destructible environment of the map. And there's a lot. In fact, I think there are three capture points on Conquest in this zone alone. So they are very close together, but they all vary a little bit. As you saw there, there's a capture point around the flag or the antenna. That there is a little bit more open, and then some of the capture points are further into these buildings. And obviously that creates even more close quarters gameplay. And then you go beyond that, and then you've got uh, some of the capture points that are spread further around the edges of the map, and then you have one lone capture point right in the middle of the desert in between all of the sand dunes. And that's one that's definitely going to be fought over with all the tanks and all of the, uh, the biplanes fly flying over. And I'm lo loving the diversity of weapon weaponry we're seeing so far. Already, you've seen the shotgun coming through, clearing out that close range where in that infantry sort of area where they re-flourish, you get to punish. And that's why we're on board with C-Nanners. This is not prop hunt. I can tell you that right now. So you've got to get into the <laughs> battlefield and do some work. So he's going to be going for it, going with the charge here. But you can see the punish come out from the others. Already set up very well. There's gorgeous rifles. Going to nick the horse and go for a ride. He's Why not? For it's it. up for grabs. You may as well take it if you can. Unfortunately, he didn't manage to get away there. But, you know, that was a valiant effort. I think he deserves some credit there. Always going for the anti-tank line on the horse. That was uh, an interesting way to try and take that one down. And, and so far, the horses look really good here. They look like they work with the map. They, they don't seem to be clunky or just you know, out of place. They seem to be really having a purpose. <laughs> However, the riders, on the other hand, are being Ooh. punished. The plane crashes. This environment is absolutely beautiful, as you can see as we take ourselves through this one. The teams are battling out hard. And actually, Westy, this is pretty close so far. It is very close, actually. Obviously, the Ottoman Empire up there on the right have taken a, a five-point lead or so. And actually, we'll talk about the, uh, the point system here, because that goes back to the Conquest game mode. It's slightly changed in Battlefield 1. There's, there's no ticket bleed anymore. You might remember in previous games, if you kill the player, the, uh, the score would change. Yep. And the way that the scoring has changed as well, it no longer counts down to zero, it counts up to a top value. And uh, to remove the ticket bleed puts further emphasis on all of those capture points. You have to capture the flags in order to gain points for your team. And I think that's such an intrinsic thing with Battlefield, though. You play for the team, you play for the objective. You can't just win on your own. You have to be as one. And focusing on taking those points down is part of the plan. And taking yourself towards the caps here. And actually, let's talk through that there, because we saw the bayonet charge coming out. Now, I know some people know this, some don't. Again, you know, new viewers coming through may not realize that maybe that's not always the best idea to take yourself further into it because maybe sprinting works out better. Can you take us through a little bit of that mechanic? Mechanics, I know you know about it. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> so the, uh, the bayonet charge mechanic, obviously it's intended to, uh, to take down a player. You charge straight into them with a very, uh, very sharp object. The pointy, and, yeah. uh, 
but, but uh, it can be used in, uh, in another way. And a lot of people have started using it to very quickly get themselves out of a sticky situation. Maybe they're caught in a crossfire, they don't want to be there, or there's a player in front of them, they're not ready to go. They turn around and they bayonet charge out of the way because you sprint so much faster. However, though, after that sprint, you can only walk because obviously you've just gone for a fairly serious sprint. Uh, and you can't sprint normally after that point, and that can sometimes leave you very vulnerable. Well, we're going to be seeing that up close action here. The melee comes out, an absolute takedown comes in. That was lovely to watch. However, the tanks are doing the major work. I think that's actually X Factor in one of those, driving around, doing everything they can. But there are counters to this. Now, maybe new players that are going, well, how do you deal with a tank? You know, I'm just a man, but there are ways to get around this, isn't there? 100%. I mean, there are specific classes that are actually built to deal with that. And uh, in, the, in, the, in this game, you're looking at the assault. And something that you might notice that you might not have seen before in previous trailers or gameplay from the alpha is that the assault players now have access to explosives. A bit like what you might call C4, but obviously a World War I version of that. So it's more like a, a dynamite stick. And that's something that you're, you're likely going to see in the gameplay today. Very up close and personal, though. You have to get close to the tank to be able to get near enough to throw the dynamite. It doesn't stick like modern explosives do. So you have to be very close uh, and uh, sort of catch the tank unawares. Yeah, and Stone Mountain trying to hold on here. The rest of his team was almost wiped at that point. His squad was in dire straits. So he's going to try and do what he can on the objective almost here near that train station try and keep this one under wraps you're going to see actually at the moment it's the british empire taking a strong lead at least for now the tickets don't reflect that just yet and oh here we go the train has been deployed the hype train's about to come into the station here westy <laughs> yes uh, this is actually a really interesting bit because even though it's a behemoth and yes it's designed to change the game it really depends on how you use it if you don't use it correctly then you could actually leave yourself more vulnerable. It could go very quickly indeed. And then you've lost your chance to sort of change the tide of the battle. And let's, let's go down that route, actually, because we're going to see it in action very, very soon. The point is it, it doesn't really get to the capture points, does it? It only really goes by one. It has an effect on a second. It does do damage. There's no disputing that. Here comes and the here train now. And yes, it is on rails for anyone else out there who wants to make <laughs> a joke about that. No, it is on rails and it features six different seats plenty of cannons on the side it's actually got an anti-air cannon as well so it is extremely powerful not only to ground units but people up in the sky really do need to pay attention as well now speaking of up in the sky though there has to be a counter to this as you said there are ways to play around these behemoths because we saw on that first map people were kind of unsure how to deal with it the first time then you see that everyone coming together taking it down and working through it how do you deal with that train well, one of the things that you can do is, as an infantry unit, obviously, as I said, the assault player does have access to some explosives, but in, in my own sort of experience of looking at the games that we've seen, players in sort of planes are going to be the best ones okay. to sort of... Uh, eyes in to try the sky and, Yeah, eyes in the sky, really. You've got people in the bombers, and they're the ones who can deal a massive amount of damage. If they lay down a carpet of bombs on top of that train, they're going to do a massive amount of damage. Well, speaking of it, you highlighted Ponyline HD as one of the players you wanted to watch for this ability. He's already eyeing up that train. He knows what he wants out of this one. Definitely. But just so we can see here, this is a really good shot of just the scale of the map as well. It's absolutely massive. It is a huge map. You can see the uh, objective off in the middle there. He's taking some serious damage, but he's going to come in, I think, for another strafe run if... Oh, he's going for the repair. He feels like he's safe enough to do that. But I think he's probably going to come in for another strafing run on that, on that train. And this is the beauty of Battlefield as well. It's not just about your infantry. It's up in the air. It's up in the skies. We're seeing those dogfights coming through. And now here comes that run again. The hit and run. Pony Lion HG needs to back out of this. He's got to be careful. He is taking fire as well. They're not letting him just get away with this. And oh, that's it. He's the armored for. train took him out completely. Wow, that really does show the power of, uh, of that train there. That's something that you do have to note, though, is that people up in the planes may be the best person, the best people to try and take this thing out, but you leave yourself extremely exposed to everything else up there as well, because you're concentrating on something on the ground, not the other plane that's now behind you shooting at you. And also, let's let's bear in mind, because a lot of people get nervous about this stuff, you know, how's that going to work? Is it balanced? Is it not? Keep your eyes on the tickets. They haven't gone drastically in one favour. It's more even the scoreboard. It's meant to be able to turn the tide of the war almost, and 
Oh, we've got a little bit of uh, action. Oh, he was... I th Wolf and oh. With the pistol shot, you're going to get punished there. The MP18 trench gun is going to deal with you very swiftly. He tried. They tried to go <laughs> for, like, a sneaky melee kill, but it Stop didn't quite pay off. And you know what? It happens to me all the time. You try and go for it, and then the person turns around at the last minute, and, of course, they're the one standing there with a fully automatic weapon whilst you've got a bolt-action rifle. So... And that, again, is the beauty of Battlefield. It's the rock, paper, scissors mechanic. Everything has a counter. If you're going in for the melee, you better be aware that that person could turn around at any moment and you've left yourself extremely vulnerable. Oh, okay. Who have we got here? This is Driftor. He's uh, taking the tank into perhaps uh, uncharted territory, into a more infantry part of the map. But, of course, he's putting a lot of power behind those infantry units there. Yeah, that's certainly going to do some great damage. But already you can still find this infantry battle going on. These buildings allow for perfect cover. The map, however, does change. The cover, it just completely removes itself throughout this battle. And again, You can though, see here on the ground to the right-hand yeah. side, you can see the craters that have been formed in the ground. That could have been from a dumbfire rocket from the plane. It could have been... It could have been the, the anti-tank grenade. There are so many things that you need to be aware of in this game, and terrain deformation is one of them. You, suddenly, you might be able to use that as cover, but on other occasions, and most likely, that cover has just been taken away. Yeah, it's interesting to note that that uh, train was still going at that point, because the match has moved on a, a fair bit, but the train was still there, plucking away. And, and look at where the flags have been capped here. Let's keep that in mind. Only two are secure, one for each team. So at the moment, it's actually fairly even. Both teams going for different objectives, both running at the same time. You are seeing the covering fire coming down, the suppression coming into the place. That flag is so contested right now. They're doing whatever they can. And at that sort of range, you're not going to have the best of luck with that sort of weaponry. And well, you're not going to have much more luck if you do that. <laughs> that says accident. I'm not sure what it's happened a little backflip. there. A little backflip. It didn't go well. We're still running in favour of the Ottoman Empire here, but the gap is only 10 points. And as I said, kills don't count towards that score anymore. So there is a lot of frantic toing and froing around these flags. But now you can see the that British the British Empire, Empire now have control of, I think... That's, that's, a, four. A, that's, that's a four lockdown, at least. It's a, that's a six lockdown now. It's about to be. There it's it is. It's about to be six lockdown. And you sh as you can see, the British Empire catching straight back up, now reducing their lead. And this is really where Battlefield can completely change in just the blink of an eye. And at the moment, the Ottoman Empire only clinging on to one point. That is not what you'll be seeing. And actually, let's, let's talk a little bit about this sniper rifle as well. Let's, let's talk about what we're seeing here, because you see talk, you know, people talking about zeroing, which you didn't necessarily see in that one, but you know, bullet drops are a thing in this. It's, it's not just your you know, out-of-the-box kind of easy shooter. This is tough work. Yeah, you've got the bullets that you fire do actually travel across the map. They take time to reach the enemy that you're firing at. You've got bullet drop and bullet drag as well. So people who don't know what bullet drag is, that's where... Oh, <laughs> look at that for a roadkill. That was fantastic. That was actually either a really good bit of skill or something extremely lucky. Either way, it was a cool bit of footage. Look, no luck, just skill. One shot, one kill. All right, that's what I cling to, and I will always stick to that, you know? Don't be a naysayer, or I'll have to bring out the horse puns, okay? But we are seeing still this back and forth going on. At the moment, the British Empire have turned it round towards more of their favor. However, the clock is running out here. We're down to one minute, actually, under that. These are the final closing moments. If, if the Ottoman Empire doesn't come back into this, they could be done for. Well, looking at it now, I would find it extremely unlikely if the Ottoman Empire really managed to pull anything back at this stage. Only 45 seconds to go. They have taken back a couple of points, but they appear to be losing them just as quickly as they're taking them. Perhaps the players on the map, their distribution isn't great at the end of the round. Maybe they're just frantically trying to capture whatever they can. And that's, again, that's part of Battlefield. It, it, it forces you to change what you're doing. Suddenly, you've got to focus on something different. I mean, there are 64 players playing here, so there's always something different that's going to happen. All right. Anderzel, what have you got here? He's capturing, at least. Yeah, he is capturing. He's actually doing some damage. He's Not trying enough. to take out the... Uh, <laughs> trying to take out one of the planes, but we are coming very close to the end of the round now, just 10 seconds to go. And that's a nice way to finish the round, I think. A good overview of the map and our first round of Battlefield 1 on the desert. There it is, <laughs> ladies and gents. What a way to close it out. A brilliant first impression here of this gameplay on this new environment that we hadn't really seen tested out yet. Do you know what? That was an extremely wow. high score considering the time of the round. It really was. You know, that, was a, that was a really good score for them to go for. Shall we recap what we've just seen? Let's, let's take it down, because we saw a lot. And as I said, there is a couple more rounds coming. That's not it. We have more. We're not going to treat you like that. Let's talk <laughs> that one through, because we got to see the train coming into play. We've seen the aerial side of things. We've seen this new map, the environment. What really stood out to you out of all of that? 
I think when you mentioned the train, I think what stood out for me is it is a behemoth and it's supposed to change the tide of the battle, but it was gone and very quickly. We didn't see it a huge amount. It, it maybe sort of more played like a stealthy role. It, maybe it was just taking out tanks and other things. We didn't see a massive battle going on around it. Yeah. And it can sometimes be a little bit of a honeypot where everyone sort of just goes for it. But in that case, either they were just sort of playing the stealthy role and sort of keeping themselves to themselves and taking out who they needed to, but uh, we didn't see a huge amount of it. And actually, uh, something that we didn't see at all was the sandstorm, and I'm looking forward to seeing that soon. Did you just say sandstorm around Twitch chat or any <laughs> other service? Because you're, you're, you're about to get some Darude spam, let's be very yeah, honest. I think here. we are. Oh, if well. it does happen, we accept our fate, <laughs> and we're going to go with it. But yeah, th we can actually talk about the sandstorm when it happens, because there's actually a lot of different mechanics around it, because everyone who played that first map that came out through Battlefield 1 already got to see the changing environments, how yeah. the vision changed, how even sniper mechanics changed, how you wouldn't be able to see that little glistening light in the distance Definitely, because of yeah. certain aspects of weather. So again, so many small pieces changed in this game. Who knows what we're going to see with that sandstorm? It's more dynamic than, than I think Battlefield's ever been before. And we were talking about the destruction, you've got the weather in there, all those different weapons that can do so many different things. And uh, you know that, that's really, really quite exciting. Well, speaking of quite exciting, I said it wasn't over yet. We've got just a little more time to watch a little bit more Battlefield. We've got another round coming up right about now. So guys, you're not going anywhere. You're going to be watching this one again, see what we've got coming out here. Will they be able to counter the train so readily? Or will it have more of an impact? We're going to find out any second. The teams are getting themselves ready and locked into place. What are you going to be looking out for this time? I think I'd like to see maybe a little bit more action around some of the bolt action rifles. Because I think in, in this map specifically, because it's so large, you can, really can take advantage of those sniper rifles in the right situation. Now, anyone who knows me knows I am a ridiculous fan of things like bolt action rifles or anything along those aspects. I love seeing that sort of gameplay because I'm more an infantry person. You know, everyone in Battlefield seems to have their own type of how I like to play it. For me, I'm all about that life. And seeing already how they're kind of working in that nice little element that's just below that plane right there is so mounted, just taking the scenic route over the top. It just excites me incredibly. There's so many ways to play this game. And at the moment, we're going to find out exactly how these guys approach it already, though. GNA going to the you know, different sides. So the Ottoman Empire finds one and the British Empire finds the other. But it's all about those middle points. How do they approach it? How do they get themselves into it? How do they cap those flags? Yeah, and I mean, like looking at what we've got going on up in the sky, you might think that they don't really get themselves in the battle. But if they're going for a strafing run on some of those objectives that are in the town there, maybe they get some destruction going on. They destroy a house that gets rid of the cover. Maybe that sort of makes an inroad for their own team. So sometimes it might look like they're not doing much up there to help the people on the ground, but uh, invariably, they're doing some sort of damage that will have an effect on you at some point. It looks like we're all running in to the infantry area here and definitely making, Go taking good advantage of it because from what we're looking at, it is a very well-designed section of the map. And looking at it, it is rather beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, I absolutely love this. They're all going <laughs> in for C. That's the point at the moment. That's the heavily contested area. You can see the madness going down in this village area. You've got the sniper up on the roofs. You've got the assault classes running around the bottom. But there is that definitely they're utilize, utilizing even words are hard um, on those rock edges. You can really play around them and build off the back of it. And really, the terrain allows you so many more options. You don't want to be, you know, highlighting yourself over the skylines. You want to be running just in front of the defilade almost. This changes so many aspects here. But let's see how these initial kind of back and forths have gone down. Oh, we were just about... Oh, we've seen Oh, have we got a flamethrower? I think we might have a flamethrower there. We've got to find who's that on, hopefully. We need so to I try and get some footage of that. Especially, it. not only the flamethrower, but we do have the sentry, which is the walking tank, as it's The dad's called. strength. <laughs> right. And we've got the, uh, the tank hunter as well, which actually is mm. on a point of the map that we haven't seen a huge amount of. The, uh, the tank hunter on Sinai Desert is uh, it's hidden away right in the middle of the desert underneath some, uh, underneath some cover, and you can pick up the anti-tank rifle there. You do have to go a long way to get it. So it is a commitment. It, yeah, definitely a commitment, but you might, with an anti-tank rifle, it's almost a big, massive sniper rifle with uh, armor-piercing rounds in it. You're going to be firing from perhaps a, a much further a distance, so maybe you can use some of that cover that's out there, those big sand dunes, to really sort of disguise the fact that you're running around with an anti-tank rifle. You know, if any of these players have their heads off, you're going to make them all go and look for that now. I hope you're happy with yourself. You've encouraged <laughs> these guys to go wander into the desert. They're going to be in trouble. Hopefully no <laughs> sandstorm happens. 
below. Back into the action. That is going to be an incredible fact if it comes Could in. That's have... actually one of the classes I've not seen yet, so I'm looking forward yeah, to that. Yeah, and, and I think, like, what, from what we have seen of it, it's only been very brief. I mean, I did get a small chance to have a look at it, and it is a rather dauntingly sized rifle. It, and it can only be fired in prone. Everything. <laughs> How you use it? And you have to prone with it, right? You can only use it in prone or if you prop it up against cover. You mm. can't just be running with this thing and then fire it. It's got so much recoil to it that DICE have designed it so you can only fire it, essentially, with the bipod deployed. And, and that's, that's the thing that most people want to see is how do they kind of balance into this game? How do they work around that? And oh my word, that horse was ambitious trying to take on the tank. Surely that's <laughs> not going to go well, and it didn't in the end. The tank's still rolling. He's still happy chugging along. I don't think you even realize what happened then. No, I mean, in, in many respects, like the, the horse is what it maybe tried to do there. Mm. It was uh, something that um, I was talking to one of the developers about is that the horses have like a, I don't like calling it feelings because it's a video <laughs> game, but horses do have certain tendencies and they are in the middle of a war and uh, they are sort of maybe a little bit jumpy and uh, they can actually sort of jump over cover if you approach it. So let's say maybe coming up to a small wall or barbed wire or something like that. As long as it's not too tall, the horse, the horse will actually attempt to jump over it for you. And, and one thing I'll say, actually, and I'm a big fan of this, is how good it looks when they do this. And we actually can come to a moment here that we're seeing is, is this kind of yep. uh, mantling almost, but this really quite high mantling. They're pulling themselves over this, and it comes back to this again, though. The animation looks so smooth when they do this in Battlefield 1. It feels like they're actually working with the environment rather than yep. working around it. It doesn't feel like the environment is against you. Yeah. which is maybe something that a lot of people thought some of the older titles, where you walk up to a wall that's taller than you and you think, oh, I can get over that. And, yeah. and you couldn't. You just run up to it and Stand sort of there walk backwards and forwards, and then <laughs> somebody shoots you in the back because you're not paying attention. But now in Battlefield 1, you can vault right up over that, pull yourself up and over. Obviously, you do slow down, but you will get over that cover, and that creates like a, a new layer of gameplay. Suddenly, that solid wall in front of you is no longer the cover that you thought it was. And look at this beautiful gameplay. That's actually Anderzel coming out with this. So really nice work with that assault class. Just running around. He's got a great opportunity. Drunks gets absolutely wrecked. And I love seeing that. <laughs> nice try, Drunks. I see why you're not in Fnatic anymore. Yeah, he is the ex-professional. He's no longer a professional. That's actually quite harsh. Never mind. Hey, I'm allowed to do that. All right. You know, you got to abuse him a little bit. But actually, let's talk about Conquest as well and how this game mode works. And maybe some features that people don't really realize. You saw it then when the point was being contested that... When they were on the capture point, it wasn't all red. There was a piece of blue, actually, in that sort of, I yeah. guess, you know, piece above whichever point you're capturing. What does that actually display, just for people who don't know? Well, if we might see it a little bit more in the gameplay as we move forward, but it sort of appears above the capture point on the center of your screen. And it's almost like a little dial, and it goes one way or the other. And if the dial is sort of more one color than the other, obviously you're friendly, you're blue. So if the dial is more blue, that means that there are more of your players yep. on that capture point. If it's more red than it is blue, then there are more enemies on that capture point. So as you can see here, we're on the antenna point, and you can see there was a lot more red on that line than there was blue, which means he's not going to take that capture point on his own, and he will simply have to fight off the people that are on it before he can start to take it. And he's looking for high ground, it seems. I don't think he's got what he wanted here, so he's going to have to take the man-to-man -man fight, which may not be ideal at this point. He's already got a bit of a challenge coming from the other side. He's going to try and find another route. This is the environment we're talking about. You're not locked into one approach. You find your own way through these maps, and he's going to take himself as best he can around this map and find a better way to approach it again. Still not in the perfect position for this sort of weaponry. He's got that scope on top. It doesn't really work in these close range elements, and you're going to find out exactly what... Oh, a complete takedown. A complete takedown there with the horse. Trampled to death. Just completely <laughs> trampled to death by Game Riot. <laughs> so let's, let's check in on the tickets as well here, because so far we're seeing 74 to 60, a fairly even game, 70, you know, seven minutes, excuse me, not 70, seven <laughs> minutes left overall, that'd be a little bit longer. Um, so this has been a very close affair. It seems that the spawns coming in, the way these teams are playing this out has been very even, but... Oh, what did nice we see time. there? What did we see there? And as you can see on the screen, here comes the armor training. And something interesting that you'll notice, uh, the flamethrower. We can see it for the first time. As you can see on the screen, you'll notice that it's a little bit darker than perhaps a, uh, a normal person's view. That's because the Flame Trooper, the elite class, has a permanent gas mask on. And that sort of fits the role because it is a... Uh, it is a, uh, a flamethrower, so perhaps yep. you might want to protect yourself from that heat. Yep, but at warm. the same time, it means that they can't be damaged from gas grenades. It's kind of like a little balancing feature. 
One thing you have to remember with the Flame Trooper, though, is it's really only effective in close quarters. Oh, yeah. That Flamethrower isn't going to reach very far. You did see there, he was taking a lot of damage from the, uh, the soldier. It was a little bit further away from him. That was an extremely brutal takedown. That was, uh, that was rather epic thing to see. And as mentioned, the train is on its way in. On the, um, on the right-hand side of the screen, by the score there, you can see the train's health up at the top. You might notice that steadily decrease as the uh, train moves further into the map, starts to attract a little bit more attention. Oh, it's interesting. It's at the train station right now, perhaps where it should be. It's found its place in life. <laughs> I think that's something that you mentioned earlier, actually. Yeah. We didn't really expand on it. The train itself moves through the map. It can be controlled by the driver backwards and forwards. It can be stopped in one place. And it does have effect on a couple of the flags. Mm. This one here, the, uh, the actual train station, and there's a, uh, a couple of flags either side, I think one either side, that it can have an effect on. So if you've got a good route going backwards and forwards, the behemoth there can sort of take back maybe three flags in one stint, which could be extremely helpful. It really can be, and it does, as you said previously, provide more than just that, though. It doesn't just play that capping role. It is the damage it provides. It, it draws people in. I don't know what it is about it. It's like the <laughs> black hole. It, everyone just kind of piles towards it, which may be good for them or not. We'll find out. But already, the, the points are becoming more even. It is serving its purpose. And I know a lot of people were nervous about its implant. How is it going to work? Does it, you know, how is it going to go down? Actually, so far in this playtest, at least, what we've seen from these guys, it is actually turning it around when you have that big deficit on your side. You yep. can pull back in and, oh, oh that's absolutely brutal. That was a takedown and a half. He didn't expect it because he turned around yep. to see the bayonet going straight through his chest. That was a rather interesting. Just a good overlook here, actually, of the map. So you can see that's the scale massive. of it. It is absolutely massive. Really love that uh, spawn-in animation. Though. You swoop down onto the map. It's really cool. Right. And even well. here you can see the scale. Look how far away from all the objectives he is. He's got quite a lot of running to do before he'll reach uh, some of those objectives out there. And it's so deadly just walking across that really open environment. You yeah. will get punished if you do. You've got to find ways to find cover or maybe utilize those horses. As Lars kind of brought into the conversation, they do have some fair speed on them. Those things aren't slow. They can surely pull yourself into the battle. So maybe look at those to pull yourself in towards maybe a more infantry style or yeah. sit back with the sniper. 100%. I mean, the train here actually is uh, going down rather quick. We haven't seen a huge amount of gameplay of it, which is a little bit unfortunate because, again, it's gone down very quickly. But what you can see is the British Empire oh, have got control of about four of these flags, which is sort of put them behind a little bit because the Ottoman Empire came back yeah. into the lead there, but it's almost neck and neck. Oh, no. 100 points each. That was uh, a rather epic little crash right there. He can pretend he meant it by going to the B point. That's it. It would yes. just be like, that was tactical, actually, guys. He was Do just not parking worry. it. He was just parking it. And, and actually, the thing we're saying was that open terrain you had to traverse being such an issue. Actually, now that the train's been dealt with, you can see the plumes of smoke covering the battlefield. You can use that as cover. Yeah, suddenly that becomes like a barrier to the desert that's out there. There's like a, a, a strip of this smoke that's going along. And mm. although it doesn't look like a good amount of cover, if there are enemies on the desert side of it, further out to the left-hand side of the screen there, they're not going to see you on the other side of that train, which is a, an interesting thing to think about, especially because the train station itself, you can see there, has got quite a lot of the original uh, parts of it destroyed so although it's not exactly whoa, whoa, the same whoa. what is that in the distance is this what i think i'm seeing that uh, that looks like a sandstorm that looks terrifying <laughs> i <laughs> the train is scary okay as as a, as a gamer that scares the life out of me but oh my word this is enveloping the whole map it's just rolling in from the You're distance players are gonna have to pull themselves into closer range here surely Definitely. they can't play in this because look you can start to see the effect already with three minutes oh of the game word. to go with the score being tied <laughs> oh my how word. is this going to play out it could be Tommy really really interesting yeah this this changes the whole aspect of the game this is the beauty of battlefield to me that you just get to see this incredible environment change in the blink of an eye now Speaking of blink of an eye, you're going to be blinking for a while. You can barely see in front of your own hand. That's incredible. This is going to be much better to be playing in this close range. You might have to switch away from those snipers, play towards more the assault or something else because that is Im impossible to see and the spam's coming out. All right, the memes is, you know, thank you for the memes. <laughs> but you can see the effect it's having. Definitely. I mean, one thing that, that the Sandstorm does do is it, it 
as you said, it brings the gameplay in a little bit. But in this infantry-only area, it's put sort of like a, a grayscale over certain parts of it, but you'll see it's still very much visible. So perhaps we'll see a lot more gameplay in this infantry section simply because the sandstorm has rolled in. And you know that going out into the desert at the moment, not being able to see 20 feet in front of you is probably a, a very bad idea. It's not what you want to be doing. And, and looking at how the teams are currently positioned, the British Empire is actually kind of stuck out towards the desert side, whereas on the other side of things, the Ottoman Empire has a little bit of control, or at least trying to contest the control towards the yeah. more infantry. Oh, Ooh. that was a six shot and a half. Stoney coming in with the goods. Now, he's actually the captain of one of these two teams. He is. He is the captain, and he is one of the, uh, the best battlefield snipers out there. You'll probably see a few more shots from him pulled off all over the place. But actually, looking at the score, the Sandstorm is still there. The score is tied pretty much at 128 each, 127, 128, with only a minute to go. So this literally could come down to the wire. This is Battlefield to me. These sort Definitely. of battles, when it gets hectic, when it gets absolutely mad in these sort of aspects, now that sandstorm's starting to dissipate a little. You might start being able to see a touch more here, but still, vision blur, trying to find their way through. 55 seconds left, 131 tickets towards the Ottoman Empire against 131 on the other side. This is neck and neck. And look at this, it's three caps to two at the moment. Actually, no, it's two, two. This is, this is literally going down to the wire here. It is going right down to the wire. You can see the Ottoman Empire does technically have a little bit more control. Oh, no, it's lost it's it. Won. Objective C is now moving over to the British Empire. And we could now see with the Ottoman Empire, it's still neck and neck with 30 seconds to go. But at the moment, we're seeing them all stuck on that sea capture point. They brought it back. Now they've got three under wraps here for the British Empire, so they're going to start pulling ahead just a touch. Two are being contested for the Ottoman Empire, so they might fall behind a little bit, but still it's up in the air. The contest is going on. 15 seconds remain. It's back to 137 apiece. I can't call it either way here. This is literally going to go down to the wire because you'll see C is now being taken back. Oh, my word. By the Ottoman Empire. What is going to happen? Three, two, one. That's it. That, that can't... We it came as a draw! <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic! Do you know what? That deserves a round of applause. We got Darude, we got Sandstorms, and we got a draw. They're rarities in this game. Do you know how many times? That's amazing. You must practice these things all the time. You never expect a draw to be the final result on the second round. That means coming into the final round, Decider. it's got to be a win for the Ottoman Empire because the British Empire won the first round. So the Ottoman Empire are going to have to win. You're going to have to Nothing, win. Boys. No pressure, absolutely no pressure. Now, how can we recap that game? Well, let's, I... <laughs> let's, let's try. It's not going to be easy, but let's try. Okay, so I think the Sandstorm played a massive part there. Because as the Sandstorm rolled in, it was sort of neck and neck anyway. Mm. I think it just kind of stopped anybody really doing anything for yeah. the period of time. And not that that's a bad thing, but every sort of, everyone sort of moved into the infantry zone. Flags did change hands, but oh, back then another flag changed hands, and then another one. So it never really sort of changed too much and it was just this frantic battle going on all over the infantry section. And this, these are the choices you have to make in Battlefield though sometimes. Classically in, in game types like this, it's do we keep going back in for the same one or do we try and go on that massive flank? That's a commitment of time. Do we have enough time to do it? You know, where are our respawns going to be? Where's my squad right now? All of these sort of questions come to mind and you'll see experienced players weighing up yeah. those options and sometimes the best thing you can do is got to go back into that meat grinder, got to go back in there <laughs> and just face the music and hope for the best. But a draw. I, to, to players who don't play Battlefield yet, or they haven't tried out Battlefield 1, or you know, the previous iterations, how rare is a draw? Just, just highlight this. Extremely rare. <laughs> Usually you're going to have a point where somebody will come along and towards the end of the game you might see somebody's lapse of concentration and then second. that flag gets taken and there's a few tickets in it. It is extremely rare to see a draw, but I think the reason it is is because you've got so many experienced mm. FPS players out yeah. there. On each team, you've got Battlefield players, other FPS players, and I think that is the, probably the reason why we saw it come down to the wire. I'm thrilled to say this is going to come down to that final round. Even though it's not meant to be competitive, you're going to see <laughs> these players is. getting riled up. <laughs> I could hear them at the end of that. I'm not sure if you could at home, but trust me here at Gamescom, we heard it. It's down to the final round here. This is the last glimpse, at least for now, that you're going to get. So guys, enjoy this one. It's all onto the Ottoman Empire, if I'm not mistaken. It is the indeed. British Empire picked up the first, then it was a draw. Now it's down to this. This is where it's all about. Look at that gorgeous face. He's ready. <laughs> He's focused. And we're back into the battle. This, I think, is where you've now seen these guys on the map twice. We've seen them in the sandstorm as well. They kind of know everything that there is to know, mm. at least at a, an entry level now, of what's going on in this map. So you might see some more 
maybe risky plays in the final round, especially if the Ottoman Empire do have to take the win, then, you know, maybe they, could, maybe they have to take some risks in order to try and get a few more flags in the British Empire. Yeah, they're going to have to get off their high horse and get into battle. Oh, here are the puns. You, you just love the puns. I'm just going to keep running <laughs> out now. You know what I mean? Like this, this, this is my life. Horse puns. One I haven't train ones yet, though. One thing I will point out uh, whilst, we, whilst we look at the screen here, we look at actually these, these wow. Jeeps. It's rather interesting. The armoured vehicle has access to mines that come out. <laughs> that was a rather uh, funny uh, killer. Oh, my God, it happened again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the um, the armoured vehicles have access to uh, mines that can be dropped out at the bottom of the vehicle. Ooh, so wow. I think that uh, have we seen that yet? So, well, listen to this. One of the players earlier on today tested to see whether those mines would damage the armoured train. Now, the only way that you can damage oh, wow. the armoured train with a mine is that you have to put the mine on the on tracks. The you can damage the train with the mine. See, these sort of mechanics is what I love about this, is you see players working out new aspects and burn, baby, burn. You're seeing the fire coming out and there's just charcoal everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the barbecue of Gamescom 2016. <laughs> it's all kicking off. He's going to try and find some cover there. You can see the fire coming back in, but it is heating up here in this final round. The Ottoman Empire is ahead, but by a very small margin. I think if they don't take the lead significantly early on, they might find it difficult to really feel comfortable yeah. in the round because obviously so many good players on either team that means that anybody could really change the game at any point <clears throat> i think that i think you were trying to open the window i think they were trying to do that i just think they were really <laughs> frustrated you know you've got to take it out on something and that window was there and you're seeing the movement now Anderzel is good at this i uh, you know i I don't want to hype him up too much, but he should be nailing this one. And that's going to be a double if I've ever seen it. He's got to follow up. The pistol comes yes, out. He, he goes does. for the melee. Doesn't need it. Big Star just got punished. And now he's in a good position with this rifle. Oh, Another time. Go go for the third. Ammo guy, turn around, please. Just on oh, the charge. Oh, my word. That is sick. Anderzel, you are doing the damage. You're doing the work. And that is what we will be seeing. This <laughs> there we go. The celebratory, promised. The celebratory victory crouch. <laughs> is that what you call it? I think that's probably what we should call it now. Technical term. <laughs> <laughs> he did promise he would do that if he did something good. So, you know what? At least he keeps up to his promises. But let's see how the landscape is now evolving. What are we seeing at the moment here, score-wise? Who's in control? Who's in the lead? Well, like I said, if the Ottoman Empire didn't take an early lead, which they have, they might struggle to hold on to this one. But they are now double ahead of the British Empire in a comfortable position at the moment. But as we know in Battlefield, anything can change at any point. We've got 11 minutes left of the game. You know, that's plenty of time for the oh, Brits yeah. to come back and do something about it. Yeah, there's, there's loads of time. They're still trained. Sinanas gets flanked on by Anderzel. He was holding that position. He was trying to play hide and seek, keep up to what he normally does, but it doesn't work here. Anderzel's <laughs> on to you. He's got things to do. And now he's going to follow up some more. Not going to get it that time, though. He gets shut down in the end. That's what we wanted to see there. A little bit of a, you know, he's got to be reminded that he's human at this point. But still, let's, let's take a look at how the landscape's evolving as well, because this is another factor here that, you know, the cover that once stood will be taken away. And already that train station is looking worse than King's Cross at this point. <laughs> you can see those, uh, those two empty carriages there. They are obviously intact and full at the start of the round. They don't provide a huge amount of cover, but, you know, they still stand as structures. And you see somebody using it as cover right there. At the start of the round, they would have been, you know, more beneficial to use. But now, yeah, it's like sort of looking through a fishing net. You can see straight through it. Oh, that horse isn't going to be in a good way. Oh. Lovely covering fire. Let's see if the sniper can do it. Trying to do here. the lead here on the sniper with the travel time. But look at the serpentine from the other player. They're going to see those bullets, so, you know, the, the trace of fire <laughs> coming in. They're serpentining, serpentining he's now like using, a madman. He's now... <laughs> It was using some of that smoke as cover yeah. as well. Not sure he knew that, but, but the sniper did. couldn't see through He's it. He's just a genius. <laughs> Next like, if level If I run gaming. over here, he'll never know. But well, no, and, and that's something I think that as you play more of Battlefield, you will start to learn some of these higher level tactics. I mean, I'm not saying Serpentine is a high level tactic, no. but you know that it's going to make it a lot harder for the, uh, for the sniper with his, with his rifle to hit you. Or if you run behind cover, or if you know there's some smoke there and you use that as cover. Well, especially on maps like this, there's things called silhouetting, and it's it's more classical to maybe even other games, but you do see it in Battlefield on occasion. But here, on this sort of environment, you're going to see that very arid terrain in the background. If you silhouette over the top, if your player, the complete body, shows up against you know, this blue sky, yep. you're going to be a very easy target. You've got to Extreme. run against those death ledge, you've got to use the terrain to your advantage, and you're going to be seeing these guys trying to make a mad dash towards that sea point, try and get back over there, but there is no rest for the wicked. There is not. I mean, we're seeing a lot of action on this map around the infantry zone and something that we haven't seen and I, I don't know maybe this is just the people that are playing but we haven't seen a huge amount of footage of 
the middle of the desert objective, the E point. And uh, that's something that maybe we could get a good look of later. I'm not 100% sure. It would be nice to look at that, just so that you guys at home can have a good overview of the whole map. Yeah, and actually just in Here case... Here we go. There it As is. As if by magic, you know... A little oasis <laughs> out there. It's... So this is right in the middle of the desert. It's about mm, 500 metres from the other objective. So it's a long way to go. And if you look well, at all the cover the that you've got there, all of those sand dunes, yeah. that flag there is perfect for a tank battle. That's probably going to be the flag where you've got tanks coming in from one side on the Ottoman Empire, tanks coming in from the British Empire, and they're going to meet at that flag and fight over it for the entire round. Because at the moment, that's been a free pickup for the British Empire. They've had that in yeah. their pocket for as long as I can remember. They haven't been particularly challenged. Now, actually, again, just in case people are new to Battlefield, what is that sort of gun we saw there? Well, not necessarily a gun. What does that sort of serve a purpose for? I think what that was is the spotting flare. Now, that is available to the scout class as a gadget. And uh, if you pop it up over an objective or anywhere in the map, it will show up the enemy locations on your mini-map. It won't show them up on the screen in front of you, it will show them on the mini-map. And that's a, obviously a very helpful tool for not only you, but the rest of your teammates who are in that location. And obviously they've then got to go and find that person. They could be on the third story of a building, or they could be on the bottom, you don't know. But you have a general idea where that person might be. All right, so let's check it back with the tickets, how the whole battle is now evolving and going forward and how it's got to this point. The Ottoman Empire they is were. actually in the lead. Yeah, they're, they're in the lead. Not by much. Their lead is not as big as it was. The British Empire have reduced it somewhat. And oh. now the armoured train, I believe, has been given to the British yes. Empire. So the behemoth is going to the team that are losing currently. They're only 10 tickets behind, which is not a massive amount. But could that armor train just sort of be the key to push them back into the lead? Well, let's see if it, for one, helps them stabilize having control over the train station as a capture point. That's what I'm be looking at, is how much does it feed into it? You can see the train station is going back and forth here. The snipers, though, are looking in their direction. You know that this cover is absolutely vital for Anderzel. He's going to be playing this as best he can, deals. <laughs> that was when he used a Look tiny little face. box to defend himself from a player on a horse. That was absolutely fantastic. That there was a really good piece of use of cover. There we go. Now the horse. See the, ho oh. see the horse is just there. It's ready for anyone else to take. And you can actually see that on the map itself as well, can't you? It shows up as an icon, so you know where they're available if someone's on them or not. It, it shows up shows as it. I think it's a little horseshoe, isn't it? It, it is. shows up yep. on the mini map in the bottom left-hand corner. Now the uh, the armor train, as you can see, is on the uh, the right-hand side of your screen up at the top there. You can see it started to take damage already, coming down to about 80% health. It does have a massive amount of health, but like we were saying earlier, those explosives will do quite considerable damage against it. Looks like we're using the rocket gun here. I don't know if we're near the train at this point, because the rocket gun would be a really effective tool to use against it. Yeah, I've seen drunks trying to do that before when I think it was, you know, shoot on the other foot, but I don't yep. think he needs to be doing that right now. Let's see what damage comes in towards that train again. Let's remind ourselves, when that train did come into play for the um, British Empire, they're around 70, 69 points. So you can already see it has had an effect on this, but it is being counted, it's being pressured, and the Pony Line HD is doing what he does best, already coming in with the good bout, a good bout of damage there, really chipping away at it, <laughs> and it's creating pressure. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if he's up in the sky all game, obviously you're going to be focusing on the other planes, but as soon as that train comes in, He's already got it in his head. He knows yeah. what he's supposed to do to get rid of it. And at the moment, even though they've had the train for about a minute or so, the, the British Empire haven't really done a huge amount with it yet. Well, they haven't taken the lead. That's the main thing. They've closed the gap. However, the HP is starting to dwindle. It's not looking so healthy here. They're still not getting much done. They have secured the train station point. So it gives you that as a back, you know, a little bit of a back piece, a chest piece in your pocket almost. But if they could maybe go and capture the one all the way down there towards the west, the very deep west, that would be brilliant for them. Maybe follow up towards F. They have options available, but still nine tickets in the lead here for the Ottoman Empire. They have the advantage, but it looks as though that one is done and done for the smoke plumes and the train. Well, it comes with the tracks. Yeah, I mean, uh, that cover's not going to be any help to anybody there. It died in a part of the map that really is just complete open desert. Yep. So that cover we were talking about earlier is just not going to be available. And if we look at the score again, the British Empire are still 10 points behind. So that train, they didn't use it effectively enough. They didn't, they didn't get to the objectives, they didn't take it. And therefore, they've now lost their chance with the behemoth. That was so close to being such a good kill. That was so close. Tag. All tag, no frag. That's, that's, <laughs> not fun. that's not fun. But looking at the points under wraps right now, the one thing we'll say is it's, it's, it's a big difference in the way the teams are focusing this. So 
the Ottoman Empire is taking out the deeper points. They're going into that desert, they're going to go exploring, they're picking these points up and putting them in their back. Now, on the other side of the thing, the British Empire have been kind of going for the skirmish, they want to take the flags in that inner city. Now, they're not as stable to control, they're much easier c to contest. Hence, well, at the moment, we're actually seeing the Ottoman Empire still in the lead. We are still seeing them in the lead, and as we know, if they don't win this round, then, you know, all the spoils do go to the British Empire, having True. them win won the first round and then a draw in the second round. Most unlikely of events. Well, it would be the comeback of the century if it happens. <laughs> we'll see if it does well, after it, that draw. It would be a share of the spoils because then only one team has won one game. Yeah, and it's all about pride here, let's be honest. These guys <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to share the spoils. It's, you know, it's, it's on the British to actually go ahead and win this. The gap is still at 10 tickets at the moment. That must mean, it's uh, even with the tickets now being 10 apart, mm. it's a very even contest then, because we're not seeing any reduction or increase in, in that difference. So maybe the start of the round, the Ottoman Empire had the advantage, but the British have pegged them back a little bit, but they haven't really done much more to sort of get ahead. Yeah, it's, it's one thing to even it up, it's another to keep it and then, you know, turn it to an advantage. It's not easy to do it. You have to weather the storm, not just once, but the reinforcements when they come through, take down these squads back to back, and the horse mounting was, looks awesome. That was a lovely awesome. animation. That, that was really great. Cool. I, I was just like, I haven't got time to sort of get on it properly, so I'm just going to jump on it. <laughs> And it looks like the weather again is turning here. You can see that sand being pushed yeah. across the screen. Yeah. It's it's not a clear day, let's say, here out no. in the desert. It's getting a little bit hectic. Now, last time, actually, it did help out. For some reason, the British Empire, I don't know why, that seemed to help them a little bit more. Who knows, but already not going to go well there for one of the players. That, but this is very, very close at this point. I can't see the storm coming in. It just looks as if there's an increased amount of wind, which is kicking up some of that dust, making it a little bit harder to see at longer ranges. But let's take into account what we're seeing right now. Finally, we have the British Empire actually taking more flags than the opponent. They did for a little while. They had four to three and a little bit of a contest between the two. And already a little bit of a fly around here. Looking to see what happens. And Drunks, again, going to try and find some sort of work. Suppressing fire going to come through. He knows he's got to kind of pace himself with that sort of firing range. But his teammates are going to do the job for him. And at the moment, the Ottoman Empire is still in the lead. The British have reduced the ticket, the ticket difference now to about eight, which means they've made a little bit of progress. But with only, I think that's one minute and 47, 48, yeah. 48 seconds now, that's still a rather large gap to have. But the British Empire do have control of five of the seven objectives. This could be it. This could be enough. You can see, even in the chat, they're cap flags. They're trying to get these guys, stop taking the needless battles, get on those points, get those flags in our favor, because we need this right now. The kills don't matter like they do before, not to the same nope. extent. They don't affect those tickets like the flags do themselves. That gap is closing. We're down to four here. We are Westy, down to this four. is going all the way again. We've got a minute and 20, and the gap is now down to four, sometimes three tickets, when looking at all seven on the screen. It, it, <laughs> it's so unlikely to even get one draw, but could we see the possibility of two draws in a row four to three again now that's the british two. empire has that's the upper two. hand now oh back up to word. three again and b's being contested so that means they don't get the points for it as no, they would having the three no. so again this is going to come down what's the time layout right now we've got 55 seconds remaining the fire's the coming out look at these tickets they are closing in again this is down to the wire this could be a 2-0 for the british empire if they pull this off it would be the comeback of the century already not what you want to be doing with that gas mask. There we go. Put it on. Get into cover. And oh, dear. Oh, my word. What are you doing? That was a big mistake. That was not good. We are down to the last 30 seconds of the game. The tickets are still just a gap of two or three, depending on what flags are being capped. If we can look at the flags on the screen, you've got four of them on the British Empire, three of them over with the Ottoman Empire, and lots of them being contested all the time, which is why I think we're still seeing the gap. It's down to one. One ticket. Ten, Ten seconds. seconds to go. This, this, this is what it comes down to. I, we need to get into the game to see this. Nine seconds, eight. The music's kicked up. The Ottoman Empire is in the lead by one ticket right now. The, <laughs> the British Empire need one more. <laughs> it's, it's even. It's even again. It's even. It's going on a draw. Oh, my Vic God. No, they got the victory. victory. It ticked over. It ticked over in the final moment. Oh, my God. I'm still not sure what happened. As if that just <laughs> happened. As if that just happened. We need to see on our screen what actually need, yeah, happened we need, there. We need to see the end of it. I, I, because we switched over to a different feed. Yeah. I didn't see what actually happened. No, I, I didn't see, see who won. Final screen. Um, what have we got here? I, it, we need to see the tickets. Who, I, oh my gosh, we need to see that. Yeah, can somebody actually tell us who won <laughs> that? Please we tell don't us who know. won that one. Are we oh going to do? Word. Are we going to do one Is more? Is this what's going on? Are we going to do one more? <laughs> All right, guys and girls, it's not over yet. We are locking in and loading in for one more. Are we doing one more? I do believe so.
I think we're I think doing that's one what's more. happening. Let's see. Okay, we're okay. just going to find out what's going on because that did come down to the wire. The last couple of seconds were left in that one. This is... Okay, all right. I know it's a little bit messy right now, but let's be very honest. This is how brilliant Battlefield can be in it these sort of instances. Is. Those it kind of moments. It comes down to neck and neck. I've got good news. <laughs> you know, I like to be the bearer of good news, bad news, it doesn't matter, but this is incredible news. We've got one more round to go. And We're should we say this, this, this decides it all? Yeah, this definitely decides this it. This is it. No more draws. <laughs> Please otherwise, don't draws. <laughs> Please Westy don't do any more. Winner, otherwise. We're going to do one more game, and this is not what we had in mind. So, guys, this is a bonus just because of how incredible this gameplay has already been. We're going to be jumping back in as soon as it's ready. I can't, stop, I can't stop grinning. This is I'm amazing. Gonna, like, I'm going to repeat what I said during the live stream, is yeah. that to get one draw is rare enough. You know, it, it's, it's very rare that a teams are so evenly matched that it yeah. comes down to that ticket. But to have a situation again in the third round where you're looking at no ticket difference with two seconds to go, that, can't, that doesn't happen every single day on the battlefield. Usually you get a couple of tickets in it, yeah. but we've got two evenly matched teams. All right, guys and girls, if you've been watching this from the start, this is what Gamescom is about. This is what Battlefield 1 is about. This is the action you have been dying to see all day long. We are going to the decider matchup here. Whoever wins this, whether it be the British Empire, the Ottoman Empire walks away with a victory. They've been playing tooth and nail to pick up this victory. <laughs> we've seen two draws. That's... That is incredible to even consider. And this is what it comes down to, Westy. Where are our eyes going to be focused here at the start? Well, again, I mean, I think the infantry section of that map, more so than anywhere else, played a huge part in that final score. We did see a lot more action in some of the bases that were a little bit further out, which was nice to see. Yep. We weren't just looking at the infantry section. But, again, I think it's going to play a pivotal role because there are three capture points in a very small space there. And you can just yeah. sort of do a round robin and keep moving. But if the enemy team are doing exactly the same... No one those, really benefits. Exactly. Those flags are going to move all the time. And that's the reason we actually saw the British Empire struggling in that previous game in a little bit of a way. They didn't quite have the, the outer points. They were struggling to really lock it down. Yeah. But here we go. Let's, let's take a quick stock as to what's happened. Here oh, my go. word. That's a, that's a, a long old drop. dip dive. Gotta, gotta pull that. Pull, pull, pull the ball, please. Yeah, please, yeah. don't make me nervous. So it's, it's right. early days in the round. We're looking but at... Which uh, points are with which team here? Which points are with which team? Well, let's have a look. I think the Ottoman Empire currently have control of A, B, C and E. And the British Empire have direct control of D and G and are fighting to take hold of F. So at the moment, the Ottoman Empire are in the lead again, as they were in the last round. But, you know, it's very early days. And at the moment, you're not looking at, like, two seconds left to go, frantically fighting for those tickets. And this is the difference, though. Again, you saw players like Anzel having these huge performances. You had, you know, um, every single player who, we've, I guess, highlighted in a way having their moments. But it didn't equate into pulling a massive lead. You've got to play for that objective. And I'm hoping we see more of that here. I want to see these captains make their team work. There was one thing that you might not have noticed, because um, on the right-hand side there, you've got the health meter. As Driftor jumped over that barbed wire, it damaged him. Yeah. So you need to pay attention to that. Just because the barbed wire's there and you think you can jump over it, yes, you can, but it will damage you when you do that. Okay. Looks Sorry. like he's having a sleep on the railway it's track there, snooze. doesn't he? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> when, that along, yeah, when that train comes along, that's not going to be... Yeah, when that train comes along, that's not going to be a pretty sight, is it? No, it's really... <laughs> it's not going uh, to be very good at all. So, early dominance coming out for the Ottoman Empire here. They are in a very good position thus far, putting themselves up on... Well, it was almost five caps to two. Well, actually, However, three of them are now being contested. Yeah, and that means the British Empire are making some inroads. And that obviously, they need to do as much as they can. And I can actually hear, I overheard that on the speaker, X Factor saying, get that cap. These guys, they're obviously playing in the live stream. They're here to show you this brand new map. But for some reason, I can't figure out why this means so much to them. What can I say? These We're probably going to see some really good gameplay here. I mean, he's taken out one, switches to the pistol. He finishes it off. M1911. I think that was a headshot. I'm not 100% sure, but that was a nice play there. That was a nice play. Yeah, it's, it's now just trying to convert these kills into actually getting map dominance, getting control <laughs> of these points. As said, you know, getting the kills wasn't the issue before. A lot of the players were just playing for that. But That's not just Battlefield. No. Battlefield is more than that here. And, and as we've said a couple of times, and anybody who missed that in the earlier part of the stream, when you kill players in Conquest, that doesn't count time. towards the ticket bleed anymore. You need to be focusing on those objectives. And it does come down to the wire. It means that at those end of those games, if you are neck and neck, mm. you're going to have a frantic moment trying to make sure that you've got more flags than the enemy team right at the death. Yeah, absolutely. Again, though, 
You can see the lockout coming in for the Ottoman Empire. They're actually playing very well as a collective. They They've are. stranded the British Empire towards pretty much that western front, almost the very far out reaches of this map, yep. making them have to traverse that terrain that really isn't conducive to these players walking all that way in. It's a long old rotate to get to this capture point. However, they're going to take that challenge on here. X Factor using the good old. Uh... <laughs> the good charge mechanic awesome. there. And obviously that means he now can't run. In fact, I think it was Stoda that was doing yep. that. I do apologize. But you're using the tactic to get out of the way of the tank, but then that puts him at a disadvantage because he can't move fast enough once he gets towards the building. And unfortunately, that led to his death. Yeah, out of the frying pan into the fire, I believe, is a, is I think a phrase that's a, that's a very good analogy. Yeah. Fantastic. I'd really enjoy it if the flamethrower dude was on the other side, then the analogy would have been perfect. <laughs> Not quite the case. Hopefully someone can just live that dream for me. But we are going to be seeing, again, Ottoman Empire, their early game so far. I'm talking them like they're some incredible team, like their early game strats are coming through. Yep. No, but they are actually playing better as a collective to get those opening rounds down. They isolated the British Empire pretty far out. Now the tides are turning a little bit. It's still pretty close here. However, the train's going to come out soon to play. That's still a factor here. That's in the back pocket. Ten minutes to go. We're looking at a 20-point gap. We've got some really good players out there on the battlefield. But as we've seen all the time in these last two games, the British Empire have a knack for coming back right at the last minute. Now, if they're going to try and perform a similar tactic here, perhaps it's more advisable that they try and go for the win just a little bit earlier. Maybe they look at that clock yep. a minute before they did last time and go, oh, we haven't got much time. We better make sure we take some of those points. Good view of the, uh, the mechanic, uh, mechanic, mechanic, the engineer mechanic. Look at this uh, lockout that, that so far. There. Yeah, oh wow, the lockdown is near enough complete. That's a full five flags, one being contested, so you can consider it maybe five and a half. Yep. And then one flag to the British Empire. And this is how you get those big leads building up. This is when you're going to start seeing that train have to be a counterbalance. They need to get their way back into the map. And yep. one of them will be that train station. Getting that as a capture point will be huge for them. That's a good platform Definitely. to then push back into the village and start working the way back through. Again, it works hand in hand. Once you get one of those points under your belt, you can build off the back of it. However, that's yet to come in. So look at it again. 74 tickets to merely 38, although all of them are being contested. What is going on with this the British Empire? Have they all gone and taken a break? What's going on? It was a nice takedown there. Did you, but, but did he need to do that? He saw two players there and went, do you know what, I'll go for the takedown maybe rather it, than the kill. Maybe it was a rush of adrenaline, like, you know, you're live on Twitch, you, you need to impress, so yeah. <laughs> it could have been that. Again, we see a, a good use of the, uh, the charge mechanic getting across the, uh, across the road there, but now he can't move very quickly inside this building. It's good that he's in cover, you know, that's a right. good way of using that mechanic, but you do have to be careful. If you decide to leave yourself out in the open, and then that's not going to be a good situation to be in. Again, though, this is what, what happens. Once these players get their head around the maps, how they work, where can I use that bayonet charge? If there's cover I'm going to, that I can maybe, you know, hunker down in for a little bit, go ahead, that makes perfect sense. But let's dive into the action and see how that's come down, because there's a lot of those points up in the air to start with now. It's starting to come, again, fall into the Ottoman Empire's hands. I don't know how this is happening. This is it's the most, not one-sided, but this is the most drastic game we've seen so far. The pressure might be just getting to the British Empire. Are you okay down there? I think he might be having a, a little bit of a problem. He's, he's, he's struggling. <laughs> it's you tough. Can, you can see that the British Empire are trying to make inroads. They do have, well, they did have their hands on two objectives. But as you can see, the F objective there is uh, taking some serious heat now from the Ottoman Empire. Whatever it is, they must have a good distribution across the map. They must have a few players here and there that are running between these objectives and helping to keep them under their control. And as you can now see, the armoured train has come in for the British Empire, as we thought it would. I and mean, they need it. They definitely need it right now. But, again, they need to make sure they use it effectively. As far as I could tell from that last shot there, at the moment it appears there's only a driver in this train. And already you can see the Ottoman Empire are all over the train. It's taken a little bit of damage, and it's not even come anywhere near the centre of the map yet. Now I'm wondering who we have in the skies for the other side. For the Ottoman Empire, who is going to be the counter to this? Okay, we've got... we got Mr. Dalek JD here okay. coming in with the bomber. Oh, he was in the sky. This could be one of the big issues here. Pony Lion, Pony is Lion HD is the man in the sky. <laughs> so he is the, I guess, if you want to call it that, a hard counter. He is 100%. defeatable, but he is the hard counter. So again, you're seeing this going back and forth. And now he's got his eyes set on how to take down that train. Look at it, taking an absolute beating. Now 50 tickets in the lead. The Ottoman Empire is stretching their legs. And However, a good shot of the flamethrower there. That was really good use of the flamethrower. Wow. He knew the player was a little bit too far mm. away. He was taking a bit of damage, so he yeah. stepped around the corner, waited for the player to reappear, and came round with the flamethrower and just took him down.
That's just smart gameplay already coming. The train is down to a quarter of its health. And, and what difference has it made? Let's look at the actual difference. It has given them stability here. That's a the only thing bit. you'd say. It really has opted them a chance back in. It opens a window of opportunity, but they have to walk through it, and they've not done that just yet. The, ta you know, the, the train's about to go down. It's, it's done for. It, there's, no, there's no two ways about it. What they need is a hard counter to Pony Lion HD. Pretty much. I wonder if the developers thought to include that. <laughs> Please nerf that one player. One thing, you, well. one thing you've got, though, is I think maybe some people have the concern that the behemoths are too powerful. I think single-handedly, Pony Lion has, has proven that that is not the case. If you are skilled at doing something in the game and you can counter yeah. something that is powerful, then you've got the opportunity to <laughs> maybe use the behemoth against the enemy team, think they've got hope, and then it's already gone. Now, this is where things get interesting, though, Westy. This is when previously... The uh, British Empire did actually have opportunities to turn it around, and they did that before. However, yep. they have not had the same benefit off the back of the behemoth there. They've not had the great time, and you've just missed on the charge. Now oh, you're in a bad position, no, but no. dancing around oh, against each other, oh. they finally take them down, but <laughs> at what cost here? It's an absolute bloodbath going down. Everyone's dead. And at the end of the day, <laughs> no matter which way the cookie, cookie crumbles, the Ottoman Empire is still massively in the lead. This is double the tickets here. They have turned up to play. They saw the challenge, and they've taken it head on, and they've been outplaying the British Empire since the start now. They really have, and I do you know what? I, I do believe that if, if the behemoth had come along a little bit earlier. Not that it does, but if it had come along a little bit earlier, I think the British Empire would have stood a chance. But with four and a half minutes to go and a gap in the tickets of nearly 60, I don't really see a way that the British can turn this one round. No. I mean, Which is a shame. It, it would need a heroic effort. And it, it can happen. We're not saying it's impossible. That's the thing. It, it's always possible at this sort of point. You've just got to completely lock out the opponent. Yep. Again, with yep. that ticket bleed being taken away from being um, rewarded for killing players and when they respawn. Because that was the factor is when they actually respawn, the ticket would drop down as well rather yep. than just the kill itself. So that being removed, it's still got possibilities. You can lock teams down. You can still commit your troops in. You can still put your squad into play. But yep. at this point... They're still pulling it a little closer, but not by much. Not by a huge amount, no, not at all. I mean, one, the only saving grace I think that could really come to the British Empire's aid, and you should never rely on Mother Nature to provide, but if the sandstorm was to roll in, then, you know, it might provide them a little bit of cover to maybe take back some of these objectives. But with such a large ticket gap, is it really going to make a difference at this late stage? With about three minutes left to go, that ticket gap is still very, very big. I'm not even sure they could turn it around at this point. It, uh, not unless the Ottoman Empire just stood still. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Even just contesting points, slowing down the cap would be huge for you know the, the British Empire. I think they'd start to struggle on that one. Yep. Again, for them, though, they've got to fight till the very end. And I think that's seen yeah. as they go for a nice little charge, just having a little run around the map, looking to see what he can find. And I don't think there's anyone really too nearby him. However, you can see the already... He uh, knows that there's someone there to take this fight. Well, as you can see, above the F icon there, you can see that little bar with the red and the blue. But you could see it because he's now dead. Yeah, um, but that showed that that point was contested, and we could tell that from the gameplay. So here's an overview of the map, or there was an overview. And as you can see, it's kind of evenly split in terms of the flags that we've got. But that means that each team is gaining tickets at yep. the same rate. So that gap is not going to change. And that falls into the hands of the Ottoman Empire. They were clearly stronger at the start of the game. Maybe now, again, the British seem to have stalled them a little bit, but they haven't really gone much further than that. Yeah, it takes more than stalling at this point. However, we're seeing the battle still commencing. No one's giving up on this one. It's, it's still very much up in the air. And you can see Anders out looking for more opportunities, trying to Going find a way to work gun. his way back in and Ooh. taking down some of the buildings around him, trying to cause damage to the structures itself so he can allow his team to make the push towards, you know, possibly getting towards B, opening up avenues of attack. And that looks like where they're going here at this point. A little bit of a fire coming down. And he does actually manage to find Dalek there as well. So still doing great deals of work. Yeah, I mean, we're coming towards the end of the round now. And, uh, you know, it looks like near enough a foregone conclusion that we've got for the Ottoman Empire. And, you know, it has shown off a lot today of, of the, the power that players have in Battlefield. It's not all about the equipment that you've got. It's about the person behind the equipment. Because it's quite clear that the Ottoman Empire have got some players on their team that really know how to use their equipment. It's, it's fantastic to see. Again, I, I just can't wait to see more of this already. Uh, we're already just getting a glimpse of what's been capable here. And wow, these... ouch. Oh. Dalek JD feels... taking down level ouch. cap there. That was a rather brutal takedown, I must say. About a minute to go, the Ottoman Empire pretty much have sealed the deal here. Yeah, this, so... this, 
Points wise, this one looks done for. Finally, we have the victor after everything. After going all the way through that, it was a, a gritty battle, to say the least. So in the last minute, they can reflect on that and be incredibly proud of what they've been able to achieve here. A massive victory in the end, just to really cement that they, you know, we were the better team. We, we made it look close, you know, those draws, <laughs> but actually, we've got this. So again, though, overall, the scoreboard looks phenomenal. I can't wait to see who's actually been playing well, over, you know, from the entire course of this game, but but the main thing here is Battlefield 1 has looked amazing. It has looked amazing. And, you know, uh, the, with the live stream coming to you over Twitch, you guys at home have had a really good look at what Battlefield 1 can offer you. The guys at Microsoft and Xbox who've put on this live stream today, thank you to them, because without them, you, you might not have got to have seen this gameplay, but you have seen some absolutely amazing Battlefield gameplay. We think two draws in a row. That, that barely ever happens in Battlefield. Not in the same server with the same players. That's just, you know, a true reflection of how balanced the teams are over there. But in this one here, with just 10 seconds to go, the Ottoman Empire have overpowered the British. This has been a beautiful glimpse at what Battlefield 1 can bring to the entire gaming scene. This is what I'm excited for. This is what I turned up for here today. And there's a victory in the end for the Ottoman Empire. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for them. They fought hard for that. that they was, deserve the round of applause. That was, for me, honestly, shout-cutting this, this thing, you know, looking at those players. Okay. Even I'm getting really excited standing here, like, that was a draw. Another draw. We're going to a fourth round. You know, I mean, you've got Stoddard there and Drifter shaking hands. Yeah. We both come away with one win for the British, one win for the Ottoman Empire, two draws in the middle. I mean, that's just, in terms of entertainment, you don't get much better than that. No, you, you don't get to see that every day. I think you really don't. Any Battlefield player who's tuned into the stream or watched this back or even been here at Gamescom in the audience in front of us.